Jim Zinio, uh, go, go. We've got to start first with status of 5G, when we're going to see the big stuff, and then, of course, there's this whole satellite world. Yes. And let's face it, the satellite world is getting really interesting. Yes, it is. And we don't even have to mention that Elon guy, so, no. you know, it's <laughs> crazy out there right now. Mm. Let's, uh, let's talk first about the status of GoGo -Go and 5G. Yep, so it's progressing along. Yep. Uh, we are pretty much on schedule. We'll probably have it done by the end of this year because we're looking to have it completed. Uh, we are doing some initial flight testing now with a kind of a, uh, what we call a breadboard as we wait for the chips to come in. So okay. we're still looking very strong in that. And like I said, the first initial SEC by late this year. Outstanding. And that's going to be in the Challenger 300. Wow, that'll be fun. What is the current uh, market estimation for something like that? I, I mean, do you have a rough idea of the universe of airplanes that could be affected by something like that? Yeah, so if you look at the U.S. market, there's about 14,000 business aircraft in the U.S. market. And of those, 5G is probably going to be more you're going to see on your mids, super mids and above. Okay. The smaller airplanes they probably would fit on there, but I don't know if you need that kind of speed. We do have some people doing that, like we have a customer up in Canada, Air Sprint, that selected 5G for their CJ3 Pluses. So it could go all the way down to those size aircraft. It just depends on what kind of capability the person wants. Uh, a lot of people on the smaller aircraft sometimes just want email and text. They don't want to try to stream, whereas with 5G you're definitely streaming. Uh, content with that uh, capability. Well, it's an incredible capability. I've, I've, I've told Dave and a number of your people over and over again about, I crewed on a CJ3 for a while with uh, the fellow who was our chairman of the board on the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation, for which I'm executive director. And we went back and forth across the country and he had, you know, GoGo -Go installed there. And what was fun about Tracy is that, you know, he looked at me, okay, you know, fly. And he'd just get out in his laptop, he'd crank on in, he's getting business done, he's sending uh, you know, emails here and bringing stuff in and checking on websites and the whole bit and just getting, I mean, he was all about, he had this big construction company, he was all about getting as much work done each day as he possibly could, which is why he built a hell of a company and yep. could afford a CJ3. Exactly. And, you know, that was one of his toys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, in his case, business equipment. But uh, the capabilities we had, and this is going back five years, uh, the capabilities we had then were extraordinary, and I, I look at the speeds and the uh, such that are coming online, and that just blows me away. Yeah, you know, with 5G, you're going to probably get about 75 to 80 megabits per second, uh, you know, peak speeds, and on average about 25. So, yeah. with that kind of speed, you'll be able to do streaming, uh, uh, video calls, you'll be able to do we, Zoom. We can do airborne from there. Just, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, so all that capability will be there when they get the 5G and the air call. Outstanding. Now, satellite-based systems. Yes. That's the final frontier. Uh, that's the next big leap. Uh, and the nice part is, is you guys aren't standing still with one technology. Yep. You're investing heavily there and, and developing a whole new architecture and system around that. What's the state of all that right now? Yeah, so that's our Galileo right. product line. So that's also progressing very well. We actually got the first prototype antenna. It's actually up on our roof right now in, in Broomfield and we're doing some initial testing on it. We plan to start flying probably early summer, and once again, that also will be done and expected by the end of this year. And what's nice about that system, you'll get worldwide coverage. So with the 5G, it's really continental US and lower Canada, and with Galileo, you can fly anywhere, mm -hmm. So, which is really nice. And the beauty of Galileo, and just the whole advanced product line is, all you if you already have an air-to-ground system, one of our advanced systems in the aircraft, you just add the Galileo antenna on the top of the aircraft, run two wires down to the box, and you're done. It's a pretty, it's a simpler install, and you have best of both worlds. So while in the U.S., you can use the air-to-ground system uh, for, you know, probably cheaper cost than the satellite, and then the satellites once you get off the coast. Or if you want to split the cabin up, you could have like principles on the satellite and the pilots like on the air-to-ground system. So there's a lot of things you could do, a lot of configurations, a lot of capability, having both systems on the aircraft. How are and aren't the systems competitive? Competitive against each other? Yes. Uh, they, there is some overlap. So okay. some people may go straight to the satellite system. The thing that you probably see is that the air-to-ground systems will most likely always be cheaper as far as cost to run, just because satellite time costs money and it's going to be a little bit higher priced. So if you're looking for a simple solution, it's also, I mean, the hardware's cheaper too. So like our base uh, L3 system is like 55,000. 
whereas the sat the Galileo is two hundred thousand. So for someone in a smaller aircraft, they're going to probably go to a near the ground system, especially if they never leave the United States. Okay. And how how do both these systems scale? Excuse me. How do both these systems scale? So they uh, the on the Galileo there's two antennas. There's a smaller antenna we call HDX. Okay. And then there's a larger antenna which we call FDX. And the larger antenna is for bigger airplanes, um, much higher speed. We're talking about 195 megabits per second on the big antenna. Damn. And the small antenna is 57 megabits. Still. So, yeah, so it's still very fast. Like I said, they're very capable systems. And since it's using a low-Earth orbit satellite system, the latency is very low. So you're looking at very similar latency that you see with the near-to-ground system. So like you know, 99 seconds or so for the latency at one of those satellites. And that allows you to do zoom calls without the delay and the choppiness that you see with some of the geo uh, solutions. And of course, all the really great calls like, Mom, guess where I'm calling from? Yes, exactly. <laughs> you got to do it. What can you mm. say? Um, how to, Talk about the installs. What kind of equipment is necessary to uh, back each system up? Uh, downtime, install times, whatever data you have to this point. And of course, costs. Yep. Yeah, so on the air-to-ground systems, I mean, it varies. I mean, actually, the hardware price starts around 55 and goes up to 141. Installs vary by aircraft, and dealers get really mad if I quote install types. So I yeah. can't say what the cost is for install. The interior will have to have come to out. Have to try, you know. Yeah, yeah. The uh, interior will have to come out, so you have to run cabling for the antennas that go on the belly for okay. the air-to-ground system. And then we got the Wi-Fi repeaters for the cabin. Uh, for Galileo, uh, it starts the antenna price is $200,000 with the advanced box. If you don't need the advanced box, the antenna is just $170,000. Okay. And that one will be a little bit simpler, especially if you already have an advanced. You basically pull down the headliner, gets mounted on the top of the fuselage. You have a, a gasket and a plate that kind of goes on there. And then you run the wires into the, wherever the advanced box is. What is nice about the system, too, if something that should ever happen to the antenna, it actually comes off from the top. It does have to actually be you know, pulled down the headline, so it's very easy okay. to do maintenance on it, too. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What are you hearing right now from the current install base? Uh, I know a lot of people are in the process of upgrading and had upgrade capabilities throughout. Uh, how are they able, or what are they saying about their plans and directions they're taking with the current installations and where they go from here? Yep. So we, are, we do have a very aggressive promotion uh, program going on right now to get the older systems upgraded. Uh, we announced uh, early last year that the network that it's currently on is going away. It's an old EVDO network that there's just no equipment left anymore. Yeah. No one makes EVDO networks. So we're transitioning to LTE. That's going to happen in early 2026. But we're trying to push all the customers to get it done by December 2025. So we're ready to go when we flip the switch. And it'll really be flipping the switch. One day the old network will be on, the next day it's going to be the new network. Okay. And uh, people are progressing. Uh, we're trying to give them more of a sense of urgency. It's kind of like ADSB all over again. People are always waiting until the last minute thinking, oh, I got plenty of time. And the shops are starting to fill up. So we're asking people to really start going, get your stuff scheduled, start planning for it, and get the, uh, your install before you lose connectivity. Because they will lose connectivity if they don't upgrade. It was fascinating to me, especially crewing with uh, Tracy of the CJ, just how pivotal having this capability. I mean, is everything from, okay, get a rental car when you get there, you know, because you may change the destination, couldn't prep for it. And so, you know, you call budget from, yeah, I'm a 410, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk business uh, and so forth. But uh, it became more than a tool. It just simply became part of the environment. Yep. And, and I mean, it was fun for everybody who's flying with us because, you know, they could you know, text each other and guess where I am and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But for those of us who are flying and working and trying to make arrangements and calling Clay Lacey and, you know, hey, uh, we're going to need hangar space tonight after all, blah, blah, blah. Extraordinary. Yeah. And just straight old business too. Hey, you know, get this done, that done, so forth and so on. Yeah. I mean, right now, people cannot be disconnected from anything. They oh, no. always want connectivity. And if you own an airplane without, without connectivity and you're trying to charter it, you're not going to be able to charter it. No. People want connectivity no matter what they're doing. So. It's amazing. So where does GoGo -Go, go from here? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you've got your bases covered uh, with two distinct high-performance technologies. 
But you do have competition out there that yep. is sniping in various ways and trying different approaches to the same ambition, which is to keep people connected no matter where they are. So where do you, but where do you go from here? Yeah, like I said, our biggest thing is the Galileo, the expansion globally. So we've always been pretty much a U.S. company because yep. of the, that's what our network is. So we have a lot of expansion to do uh, internationally. And I always say competition is good for us. It makes us, it makes us better. It really forces us to really work on our products and make sure they're highly competitive and perform really well. They're well maintained, they're reliable. The service aspect, we've always been ranked in a, either one or two for customer service. So that is how we you know, compete in the market space. And the aviation market is still growing, not as fast as other places, about one to 2% more aircraft mm -hmm. every year, but it is continuing to grow. And we're line fit at all the OEMs. So almost every one of those aircraft comes off the line with a Douglas system on it. So you're going to see that continue to progress. And I said, there'll be competition. So those, I mean, you got Viasat out there, you got Satcom Direct, got Elon Musk and Starlink, of course. He's making a lot of press, as we thought, yeah. And he's got a lot of money. So, I mean, it'll be a competitive product. And we'll have something very similar speeds. The biggest difference I think we have is we've been doing this for a long time. We understand the customer base. We understand the industry. And we understand how to take care of them. And that's a key aspect. You're dealing with a lot of high net worth individuals and major corporations. And when something goes wrong. You better perform. You better perform. Crazy. What are you learning from your customer base? Uh, the biggest thing is they will actually not go flying if the connectivity doesn't work. I mean, they really, <laughs> they're that bad at this point. It's basically minimal equipment. You've got to have the connectivity on the airplane to go flying a lot of times. Um, they like more speed. They want it as close to the home performance as we can. Well, good luck. And, and yeah, and we're getting closer. I said, with the satellite stuff, we're getting into the, the hundreds of megabytes now. I mean, will we get a gigabyte service? Eventually. There's some physics involved with this amount of energy that has to transmit through the sky, through the atmosphere, back down to the antenna. Outstanding. Yeah. It's been fun to watch you. Uh, vastly entertaining at times. Mm -hmm. And the best part is you got a really amazing crew of people. I've had such a ball working with them over the years, and some of the interviews have just been hysterical, just with reflections on the industry and what customers are teaching you, and more important than anything else, just everything from certification to just dealing with shop after shop after shop. Yep. It's been a kind of a fun story to watch. Yep. Develop, so. It's been a fun, fun business. How can people get more information on GoGo? Yeah. You know, like stop by our booth while you're here if you're at the show, uh, go to our website or just call one of our many salespeople out in the field. Okay, and uh, website is? Uh, GoGo, oh, actually, Go -Go. Sorry, no. the GoGo Go -Go business, yeah, 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 dot com, yep. Very good. Arrow News Network's coverage of the 67th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Grapevine, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Send Solutions is proud to announce a software edition for the already certified AirText Plus that is set to revolutionize navigation security. This is the first independent spoof-proofing product on the market designed to keep your navigation system accurate and error-free. Your exposure to spoofing is growing as the technology becomes more readily available. Find out how to protect your aircraft from spoofing at GoAirText.com.